Welcome to Index Properties and Soil Classification Systems Lecture 4. In the previous lecture, we have covered different physical states of fine grained soils and we have introduced Etterberg limits and we also the mechanism behind uh, shrinkage behavior of the soils and we also defined a number of indices like liquidity index, consistency index and toughness index basically to understand the consistency of a soil. And we also discussed about the laboratory procedures for determining liquid limit and plastic limit and shrinkage limit. In this lecture, we will be understanding about engineering uses of these Etterberg limits, how these Etterberg limits are useful in classifying the soil and in uh, putting the soil in a correct groove that is basically by soil classification systems. So, we will introduce to soil classification systems basically to group the soils which are exhibiting similar features, basically similar features in reference to exhibiting the similar properties. So, this is the lecture on index properties and soil classification systems 4. So, engineering use of Etterberg limits often used directly in specifications for controlling soil for use in the field. These Etterberg limits are uh, primary soil properties or index properties which are required to be determined for controlling soil for use in the field and used for predicting the activity of clay or frost susceptibility. We have discussed also in the previous class about the frost susceptibility nature of the soils and all. So, these Etterberg limits will be useful for predicting the activity of the clay, we will be defining this activity of the clay in the due course of this lecture. The plasticity index indicating the magnitude of water content range over which the soil remains plastic and the liquid index indicating the nearness of a natural soil to the liquid limit and are particularly useful characteristics of soil. So, if you look into this plasticity index indicating the magnitude of water content range over which the soil remains plastic and the liquidity index indicating the nearness of natural soil to the liquid limit and are particularly useful for characteristics for soil. And ultimately these Etterberg limits are used for classifying basically fine grained soils, fine grained soils in the sense soils which are finer than silt, silt size particles. So, greater the liquid limit we will understand that the greater the compressibility of the soil what is the meaning of the compressibility of the soil and all will be understanding in the due course of lectures, but the greater the liquid limit of a given soil greater is the compressibility of a soil. And liquidity and consistency indices are good indicators of the consistency of soil. If you wanted to understand about whether the soil is soft, stiff or medium stiff or very stiff or hard, you are required to know the liquidity and consistency indices of the soil. So, if you know the liquidity and consistency indices of soil, uh, they are the good indicators of consistency of the soil. The one limitation uh, which comes across with the Etterberg limits is the Etterberg limits will give no indication of the particle fabric uh, or residual bonds between particles which may have been developed in the natural soil, but are destroyed in preparing the specimen for the determination of limits. So, uh, one of the serious limitation is that uh, the particle fabric that is the soil fabric which was in the original state may not be represented in the tests which are uh, being uh, carried out in the laboratory by using the remolded samples. So, the Etterberg limits uh, suffers from a serious limitation, uh, they will not give indication about the particle fabric or a particular soil fabric or natural residual soil bonds between the particles which may have been developed in the natural state but are destroyed in preparing the specimen for determination of liquid limit or plastic limit and other limits. So, in this uh, what we do is that uh, once we take the sa sample from the natural state, when we do a remold a sample, it loses its uh, natural uh, residual bonds and the natural uh, particle fabric. So, these are not represented in the tests which are used for determining these Etterberg limits. So, having uh, seen engineering use of uh, Etterberg limits, let us define another important parameter activity or activity number. The plasticity of a given soil as we know is depend upon the nature of the clay mineral, nature of the clay mineral. 
the type of the clay mineral whether it is kaolinite, mantomonlite or uh, illite or the amount of the clay mineral present. So, the plasticity of a given soil is particularly dependent on the nature of the clay mineral and the amount of the clay mineral present. So, based on the laboratory tests for several soils, Skempton 1953 made the observation that for a given soil, the plasticity index is directly proportional to percent clay size fraction. So, it has been found out that the plasticity index P i is a function of percent clay size fraction. So, that is this means percent by weight finer than 0 0.02 mm in size. So, here what you have seen is that plasticity index of a given soil is function of percent clay size fraction which is nothing but percent by weight finer than 0 0.002 mm in size that is 2 micron in size. So, based on the laboratory tests for several soils, Skempton 1953 made the observation that for a given soil, the plasticity index is directly proportional to the percent clay size fraction that is the percent by weight finer than 0.002 mm in size. So, based on this, Skempton defined the activity uh, value or activity number as activity A c which is notated as A suffix c uh, as P i by c. So, P i is plasticity index of a given soil which is nothing but liquid limit minus uh, plastic limit and c is the percent clay size fraction by weight. So, here activity is given here as A c is equal to P i by c where P i is equal to plasticity index c is the percent clay size fraction by weight. So, activity A c uh, which is found to be a function of the type of the clay mineral present in it. So, activity is a parameter which is widely used as an index property to you know determine the swelling potential of a given soil. So, activity is an important index property which is being used for determining the swelling potential of a given soil whether the soil is has got the swell susceptibility or not. So, if you wanted to know uh, without understanding or without uh, testing for minerals uh, by looking at this value one can uh, get an idea about the swell susceptibility of a given soil that is swelling potential of a given soil. So, activity is a parameter which is determined to uh, understand the swell potential of a given soil. So, let us look into some activity values of uh, clay minerals. For example, here in this table form which is shown here mineral and activity value. N sodium mantomonlite, the sodium based mantomonlite has got an activity value 4 to 7, calcium mantomonlite has got 1 to 1.5. So, the distinct difference between sodium mantomonlite and calcium mantomonlite can be seen, which is exhibits very low activity value, and sodium mantomonlite exhibits a value in between 4 to 7, illite uh, in the range of 0.5 to 1.3 and kaolinite is 0.3 to 0.5, halocyte which is iterated which is around the 0.1. The quartz which is primarily sand grain uh, mineral which exhibits activity value equal to 0. So, this uh, table is after Skempton 1953. The sodium light which exhibits around 4 to 7 and calcium antimonlite around uh, 1.5, elite 0.5 to 1.3 and kaolinite 0.3 to 0.5 and halocyte hydrated exhibit very low value of 0.1 and uh, quartz which is a predominant mineral of sand exhibits a 0 value. So, based on this one can understand that how the type of the mineral plays a role in the, in the activity value. So, as we know the black cotton soils which are uh, predominantly having uh, mantomonlite mineral, uh, they exhibit very high activity values. For example, bentonite has got an activity value of around 7.2 
that indicates the swelling potential of a, a particular clay under consideration. By have by kaolinite exhibits here 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 that exhibit that uh, tells us about the uh, you know that particular uh, uh, soil whether the soil is susceptible to swelling or not. So, if you look into this slide activity minerals that is activity value or activity which we are discussing now clay minerals with kaolinite a stable clay mineral we have discussed earlier about the structure of the kaolinite uh, mineral will have low activity that is what we have discussed in the previous slide. Whereas, those soils with mantomonlite known to be a, a type subject to large volume changes depending on available water. This is the same phenomena which we have discussed earlier with the black cotton soils will have high activity value. So, clay minerals with kaolinite a stable clay a mineral will have low activity whereas, those soils with mantomonlite known to be a type subject to large volume changes depending upon the available water and will have higher activity value. So, based on this um, the soil, soil classification can be carried out by using activity values. So, so, this table shows soil classification based on activity value where activity value and uh, classification is given here. If the activity value is said to be say less than 0 0.75 then the particular clay is said to be inactive. And if it is in between 0 0.75 to 1.25, then we say that normally active clays, that normal clays and greater than 1.25 is called active clays. So, for clays containing uh, mantomonlite or predominantly say a bentonite soil can exhibit uh, activity value as high as 7.2. So, we have discussed that activity value which is nothing but a ratio of plasticity index uh, to the percentage clay fraction. So, with this we will be able to assess the swelling potential of a given soil. So, having seen the activity value now and understanding uh, having uh, tried to determine the grain size distribution of a given soil and plasticity characteristics particularly atrophic limits of a fine grain soils. So, with all this thing now it should be possible for us to group the soils. So, that we will be introducing now in the form of a soil classification systems. So, classification systems generally group together broad categories of soils that have similar features or properties which are considered to be of importance. Classification systems generally group together broad categories of the soils that have similar features or properties which are considered to be of importance. So, as a result a classification system is not necessarily an identification system in which all pertinent engineering properties of material are determined. So, as a result a classification system uh, cannot be thought of as an, uh, an, an identification system in which all pertinent engineering uh, properties are determined. This should be uh, served as an idea uh, to classify the soil which are having similar features. So, because of this soil classification system should not be used as sole basis for the design or construction planning. This should be an initial stage where you know to select the soil for a particular site this should be used as a you know a guiding system or a guidelines for uh, selecting a certain soil for certain application. So, soil classification system under soil classification system we said that classification systems are generally grouped together uh, broad categories of soils. We knew that the wide varieties of soils we have discussed in the previous lectures that have similar features or properties which are considered to be of importance. So, as a result a classification system is not necessarily an identification system in which all pertinent engineering properties of a material are determined. So, requirements for uh, a satisfactory engineering classification system. What are the requirements of a satisfactory engineering classification system? Let us look into this it lists like this limited number of groupings. So, we knew that there are uh, wide varieties of soils. So, limited number of there should be a limited number of groupings. So, that the system is easy to remember and use. So, if you look into it uh, the system should be uh, having a limited number of groupings. So, that it is easy to remember and, and use this particular soil classification system. And grouping should be on the basis of only of a few similar properties and generally similar behavioral characteristics. So, the grouping should be on the basis of only of a few similar properties and generally similar behavioral characteristics. So, limited number of grouping should be there 
and so that the system is easy to remember and use. And grouping should be on the basis of only of a few similar properties and generally similar behavioral characteristics. So, properties and uh, behavioral characteristics should have meaning for the engineering use and construction profession. That is whatever the properties and behavioral characteristic should have meaning for the engineering use and construction profession. That is to relate to the soil handling characteristics and basically shear strength, volume uh, change characteristics and permeability. So, properties and behavioral characteristics should have relevance to the site and uh, particularly in reference to soil handling characteristics and it, their compressibility and shear strength, volume change characteristics and permeability etcetera. So, we have seen the uh, two requirements, one is that there should be limited groupings and other one is that properties and behavioral characteristics should have meaning for the engineering use uh, and construction profession. The third one is descriptions used for each grouping should be in terms that are easily understood and are in common use for indicating the soil type and properties. That means that the descriptions for example, if there is a sand it should be indicated as S and if the sand is well graded it should be indicated with say uh, W a well graded sand. So, a descriptions used for each grouping should be in terms that are easily understood and are common are in common use for indicating the soil type and its properties. So, in the properties, so by looking at the group itself, you should be able to understand the basic uh, constituent of the soil and as well as its nature, whether it is well graded or poorly graded or whether it has got a silt or a clay fraction in it. So, classification into any grouping should be possible on the basis of visual identification limited to grain size distribution and atterberg limits. So, by carrying out uh, a grain size distribution and atterberg limits, we should be able to classify the soil and without special tests or equipment. So, that is actually required. So, once the soil has been uh, selected based on uh, these criteria, then the advanced tests like uh, the, the test can be determined like the properties of compaction characteristics or shear strength characteristics etcetera. So, the fourth requirement what we are seeing is that classification into any grouping should be possible on the basis of visual identification by basically limited to grain size distribution and atterberg limits without special tests or equipment. So, the fundamental idea behind uh, soil classification system is that collect the soil samples from the field. Some the field means it can be from the borrow area or it can be from the area from which the soil is, is being procured and used in the particular construction site. So, collect soil samples from the field and perform easy and inexpensive tests on the soil samples. Typically, uh, grain size distribution curve and sieve analysis coarse sieve analysis and fine sieve analysis or in case if there is a predominant clay fraction an hydrometer analysis. Once after getting the grain size distribution curve, then one can grade the soil and atterberg limit tests on the fine fraction passing 425 micron sieve. One can carry out atterberg limits to understand liquid limits, plastic limit and other uh, shrinkage limit etcetera. So, based on the results of these tests, classify the soils in question. So, basically liquid limit and plastic limit and uh, plastic index are used for classifying the soils. So, based on the results of these tests, classify the soils in question. Based on the classification of the soils, whether or not might be appropriate for in intended use. Based on the classification of soils, whether or not might be appropriate for the intended use. If yes, perform more extensive lab tests on the soils as needed. So, the fundamental idea, idea behind a classification system is the collect soil samples from the field and perform easy and inexpensive tests on the soil samples, typically grain size distribution tests and Atterberg limit tests. And based on the results of these tests, classify the soils in question. And based on the classification soil, whether or not might be appropriate for the intended usage, if required, then uh, it is advised to perform extensive lab tests on the soil samples, which are as needed, which are required to be carried out. So, this is the fundamental idea behind uh, the classification system. So, historically if you look into it, most widely used methods of classifying the soils has been through the visual identification. Visual identification the sense whether the sand or whether it is a clay or whether the silt is identified through uh, some visual identification and the size of the grains. Uh, we, we can uh, identify up to 75 micron uh, size, the size of the grain. So, up to the silt size. So, visual identification or a size of the soil grain 
can be used for classifying the soil and the plasticity of the soils. Sometimes uh, most of the classification systems have been evolved by keeping the uh, grain size distribution of the soil or plasticity characteristics of the soil. So, covering both uh, grain size distribution and uh, plasticity characteristics of soil will uh, cover both coarse grain and fine grain soils. These are basically used as a basis for uh, indicating the soil type. So, visual identification and uh, size of the soil grains and plasticity of the soil are uh, used as a basis for uh, indicating the soil type. For example, uh, if you look how to distinguish between silt and clay, both are fine grain and uh, because of the smooth texture, sometimes silt soils are uh, confused with uh, clay size particles. Basically, silt size particles which are having uh, sizes greater than 2 micron to 2 microns and less than 75 micron that is less than 0.075 mm and clay uh, which is a colloidal fraction which is sometimes less than 2 micrometers. So, in that case uh, how to distinguish between these two typical soils let us look into some uh, typical identification methods which are used. So, if you see the methods which are used for uh, distinguishing silt and clay are as follows, particularly the plasticity characteristics. If you look into this, the silty soils are mostly non-plastic soils. So, they exhibit the low plasticity and clay soils which are plastic in nature. So, they exhibit very high plasticity. So, the clay soils exhibit high plasticity, the reasons have been discussed earlier. So, plasticity is one indicator uh, where we will be able to distinguish between silt and clay. And other one is that settlement rate. For example, if you take a jar of uh, uh, water and if you disperse uh, silty soil and uh, clay soil, the silt settles within 20 minutes, clay suspension uh, even takes sometimes uh, more than 24 hours. So, the dispersion rate or a settlement rate is very high for silt size particles because the particles are heavier in size, they settle within 20 minutes whereas, the clay the liquid is still appears to be in muddy size because of the constant bombardment of the particles, they remain in suspension for a long time. So, the suspension will remain even after 24 hours. So, the settlement rate is one indicator to distinguish between silt and clay. The other one is that the diluency, the reaction to shaking. Suppose, if you take a soil in your palm and uh, with two different soils, uh, one is uh, silt type soil, another one is the clay type soil. The silt type uh, soil, once you subject to the shaking with the, by a little amount of water, if you mix it to the silt soil and uh, allow it to shake, uh, the surface uh, becomes shiny and uh, the very quick uh, reaction is observed for uh, clay size uh, clay, clay type particles and then uh, very slow reaction is observed for uh, silt size particles. So, the reaction to shaking is high for silt size particles and uh, low for clay size particles. Another one other uh, property which is uh, indicator for uh, distinguishing between uh, silt and clay is the dry strength. Dry strength is nothing but the resistance to breaking. Resistance to breaking which is uh, if you take a, uh, a block of uh, a soil which is containing silt and clay, the silt uh, which exhibits very low resistance to breaking. So, uh, contrast to this, uh, the clay size uh, soil exhibits uh, very high uh, resistance to breaking. So, this dry strength uh, which is a function of uh, plasticity and the colloidal fraction content of the soil. So, higher the colloidal fraction content of the soil and higher the plasticity, the higher is the dry strength. So, these four typical tests which are used for distinguishing between the silt and clay where the plasticity which is uh, low for uh, silt size soils and high for uh, clay size soils and dilutancy that is which is the reaction to uh, shaking is very high for uh, silt soils and low for uh, clay soils and dry strength which is resistance to breaking is uh, low for uh, silt soils and uh, high for clay size soils and which is said that dry strength is a function of uh, plasticity and the colloidal fraction of a fraction content of a soil. So, higher the colloidal fraction content of a given soil, higher is the resistance to uh, breaking the, uh, for a given uh, clay soil. 
So, here in this uh, slide uh, a typically a clay size uh, particle a clay size block or a, a soil lump is shown and uh, a silt size lump is shown. So, you can see that the whatever we have discussed the more is the colloidal fraction content or more is the plasticity the more is the resistance to breaking. So, the one experiences difficult to uh, break by applying the energy through thumbs uh, by uh, within the fingers. Uh, so, it is very difficult to break the clay size particle whereas, silt type soil it is easy to crush into pieces. So, this is uh, you know something called a preliminary crushing strength test which is used to immediately to identify a clay and silt type soils. Similarly, here uh, distinction between the clay and silt the clay exhibits very shiny appearance here you can see and even the sticky nature uh, which is appeared to the uh, stick to the hands and all. So, that is actually a mere indicator of uh, clay and the silt a dull appearance you can see here where uh, that is actually is indication of a silt size soils. So, uh, having seen uh, the visual identification test or a test for uh, distinguishing silt and clay let us look into a classification systems. So, a classification scheme provides a method to identify soils in a particular group that would likely to exhibit similar characteristics. So, if you look into it a classification system provides a method to identify soils in a particular group that would likely to exhibit similar characteristics. So, soils are classified, classified using two broad systems namely the textural system which is primarily based on the grain size distribution curve. So, soils are classified using two broad systems namely textural system which is based on grain size distribution and sim systems based on grain size distribution and atterberg limits. So, there are two broad methods to classify soils either by using textural system or by using textural system as well as atterberg limits of, uh, of a given soil. So, in the second case it covers both uh, coarse grain and fine grain soils in the earlier one it covers only the coarse grain soils. So, a classification system provides a method to identify soils in a particular group that would form that would likely to exhibit similar characteristics. That is the main intention we have discussed that a classification scheme should provide a method to identify soils in a particular group that would likely to exhibit similar characteristics. So, the major soil classification systems many systems have been developed by keeping in view of the textile uh, systems. Uh, as well as textile system and uh, atterberg limits or a plasticity characteristics of a fine grain soil. So, USDA textural classification system is uh, primarily used in agriculture not much by civil or geotechnical engineers. So, this is uh, USDA textural classification system used primarily in agriculture, but not much by civil or geotechnical engineers. The second one is ASTO classification system used quite extensively in civil engineers in selecting soils for usage in roads and highways. And uh, this system is the old system where uh, this has been uh, developed by civil engineers uh, in selecting soils for usage in roads and highways. And unified classification system or unite classification system, uh, un unified classification system used by geotechnical engineers for selecting soils for non-highway projects. So, unified soil classification system has been used for uh, identifying soils for non-highway projects. So, let us discuss uh, uh, this different uh, classification systems and then we will try to also understand uh, try to classify the soils for a by considering their properties. So, uh, let us uh, look into the different classification systems of uh, which are existing in for classifying the soil on the basis of its grain size. So, according to IS Indian standard code 1498. The classification uh, is worked out as follows. So, here in the topmost which is shown the broad groups are clay, silt, sand, gravel and cobalt. And uh, sand is further divided into fine, F indicates fine, M indicates medium, C coarse. Gravel which is divided into two subgroups fine and coarse and cobalt. So, here on this uh, axis here the particle size is indicated in millimeter. So, which is anything which is greater than 80 mm is said as cobalt and uh, anything which is greater than 4.75 less than 80 mm is treated as gravel. So, 4.75 to uh, 20 mm grain size 
which is indicated as a fine gravel and 20 mm to 80 mm is indicated as a coarse gravel and a sand which is uh, ranging from 0 0.075 to 4.75 mm indicated with the different uh, subgradings like fine, medium and coarse. So, for example, fine sand which is ranging from 0 0.075 to 0.425 mm and medium sand is 0.425 to 2 mm and a coarse sand which is 2 to 4.75 mm. So, coarse sand has got a particles ranging from 2 to 4.75 mm and silt which is uh, classified if anything which is uh, greater than 0 0.002 mm and less than 0 0.75 mm is treated as a silt and a clay which is less than 0 0.02 mm is treated as a clay according to unified soil classification system which is almost the IS classification uh, system is almost uh, similar to the unified classification system uh, except in typical sizes like 0 0.074 mm or 0 0.42 mm. So, similar groups have been made like clay, silt, sand, gravel and cobalt. So, according to unified classification system 4.76 to 76 mm or sand which is 0 0.074 to 4.76 mm. So, there are similarities between uh, unified class soil classification system and IS classification system which is based on the grain size. Now, let us look into other classifications like ASTM classification and British standard classification system. According to American Society of Testing and uh, Materials that is ASTM soil classification system, this is slightly different where here uh, the grain size which is indicated in uh, mm from here onwards and uh, he from here onwards indicated in micrometers. So, is uh, subdivided into colloids which are uh, finer than 1 micron and a clay which is ranging between 1 micron to 5 micron and a silt which is ranging between 5 micrometers to 75 microns that is 5 microns to 0.075 mm. Sand which is uh, from 0.075 to 4.75 mm. So, the here there is no difference and a gravel which is uh, cobbles have been removed and anything which is greater than 4.75 mm it is treated as a gravel in case of ASTM classification system. According to British soil classification system it is slightly different where uh, is the groups are clay, silt, sand and gravel and cobalt and uh, silt is further divided into fine, medium and coarse silt and sand is further divided into fine, medium and coarse sand and gravel again here uh, it has got three subgroups fine, medium and coarse and cobalt anything which is greater than 60 mm is treated as a cobalt. So, here if you look into this uh, the silt size particles are uh, ranging from 2 micron to 60 micrometers and uh, sand which is from 0.06 mm to 2 mm is treated as a sand and uh, anything which is greater than 2 mm and uh, less than 6 mm is treated as a fine gravel and uh, the gravel which is again which has got a subgroup medium size gravel which is 6 to 20 mm and a coarse gravel which is 20 to 60 mm. So, we have seen the classification of soil on the basis of uh, grain size by using uh, four different methods that is according to Indian standard code and other one is uh, unified classification system and uh, uh, third one is ASTM so according to ASTM uh, soil classification system and the fourth one is the uh, British uh, soil classification system. Here what we have done is that once uh, the grain size distribution uh, system grain size distribution of a given soil is available. So, based on this it is easy to uh, segregate the soil and uh, categorize uh, whether the clay content percentage clay, percentage sand or if uh, with the typical sizes we can even uh, subdivide into groups like fine gravel, coarse gravel or fine sand, coarse sand or medium coarse sand. With this uh, we can uh, group the soil by with the help of the its particle size or grain size. The next classification system we have introduced is the USDA uh, textile classification system. We have discussed that it is has got much application in uh, agriculture, very little applications are there with the uh, for civil engineers or geotechnical engineers. This system is based entirely on the grain size distribution of a given soil sample. So, here in this uh, table uh, which is shown here a uh, soil type and diameter range. Cobbles and boulders is taken as greater than 75 mm in this uh, system. The gravels range from 2 to 75 mm. Sands 
ranging from 0.05 mm to 2 mm, silts ranging from 0.002 mm to 0.05 mm, clays which are anything which is less than 0.002 mm. So, this system is a USDA textural classification system is based entirely on the GST of a given soil sample and uh, they have got further uh, subdivided into groups like cables and boulders, gravels, sands, silts and clays and the diameter ranges are which are given here where D greater than 75 mm is indicated cobbles and boulders and uh, sands in ranging from 0.05 mm to 2 mm. So, there is a relative grading is done to classify and use as per the USDA textural classification chart. The chart is not shown here, but the base uh, primary features are discussed here based on the relative percentage sand and percentage silt and percentage clay. Let us look into how to determine this relative percentage of a sand. So, relative percentage sand is uh, percentage with uh, uh, particles ranging from 0.05 mm to 2 mm size uh, divided by 100 minus percentage with particles greater than 2 mm. So, if you see if you for example, if you have got a percentage of the particles greater than 2 mm that indicates that gravels they fall in the range of 2 mm to 75 mm. So, the relative percentage of sand is de determined like percentage with uh, uh, 0.075 mm to 2 mm divided by 100 minus percentage with uh, particles greater than 2 mm. Similarly, relative percentage of a silt in a given soil is determined percentage with uh, particles ranging from 0.002 mm to 0.05 mm divided by 100 minus percentage with particles greater than or equal to 2 mm. Similarly, relative percentage of the clay is determined as percentage with uh, D less than or equal to 0.002 mm to 100 minus percentage with a D greater than or equal to 2 mm. So, like this one uh, if we are able to estimate the relative percentage silt and uh, relative percentage of sand and relative percentage of clay we, by using the USDA textural classification system we can uh, classify the soil. So, having seen uh, this let us look at a simple a typical example to classify the soil by using USDA textural classification system. Let us consider for a given soil assume that a percentage gravel is 18 percent and percentage sand is 51 and percentage silt is 22 and percentage clay is 9. This has been obtained from the grain size distribution analysis. So, uh, for a given soil it is given that percentage gravel is 18, percentage sand is 51 and percentage silt is 22 and percentage clay is 9. The solution is we have to determine as discussed earlier relative percentage sand which is nothing but percentage sand that is particles in the sand particle range from uh, 0.05 to 2 mm that is 51 divided by 100 minus percentage gravel. Percentage gravel means uh, particles greater than 2 mm this uh, here is gravel is 18 percent. So, 100 minus 18 that is 82. So, 51 by 82 into 100 is 62 percent. Similarly, percentage silt is 22 by 82 27 percent and relative percentage of the clay is 9 by 82 11 percent. According to USDA textural classification system due to the presence of the 18 percent gravel in the soil uh, it is called as a gravelly sandy silt. Gravelly sandy silt is the reduced classification uh, for this uh, type of the soil. So, in this example what we have done is that uh, based on the results obtained from the density distribution curve we have graded the percentage gravel, percentage sand and percentage silt and uh, percentage clay based on that we have computed relative percentage of sand and relative percentage of the silt and relative percentage of the clay. And once after getting that and the, by considering the presence of the uh, gravel we deduced a, uh, a classification by using USDA classification system as a gravelly sandy silt. The next classification system as we discussed the a ASTO classification system considers both texture that is grain size distribution curve and atterberg limits. So, ASTO classification system originally proposed in 1919 and uh, the system was uh, last modified in 1945, uh, widely used as uh, highway and transportation by engineers. So, considers both texture, texture uh, and uh, atterberg limits of a given soil. 
and uh, originally proposed in uh, 1919 and the system was uh, last modified in 1945. Widely used by highway and transportation engineers performed uh, on that part of a soil sample that falls in the gravel to clay size range. So, a very wide range it covers the performed on the part of a soil sample that falls in the gravel and percentage clay size range. So, once the group classification has been found a so called group index can be computed to further classify the soils within the group. So, in the astro classification system the soils have been uh, ranging from percentage gravel to percentage clay have been covered and uh, both texture as well as uh, Atterberg limits have been used to classify the soil and uh, originally which is proposed in 1919 and the system was last modified in uh, 1945 and widely used for highway and uh, transportation applications. The performed on the part of a soil that falls in the gravel to clay size ranges. So, let us look into what is the group index in the astro classification system. So, here different groups have been termed like A, A1 and which has got two subgroups A1A, A1B, A2, A24, A25, A26, A27 and A3, A4, A5, A6, A75, A76 and A8. When you go from the uh, in the chart which is given from the left to right the requirement the suitability of the soil for a particular application like as a subgrade uh, keeps on decreasing and for soils with in the astro group a3 or lower the group index is uh, given by this expression gi is equal to f minus 35 into 0 0.2 plus 0 0.005 ll minus 40 plus 0 0.01 f minus 15 to pi minus 10 for soils in A1 or A2 group index is equal to 0 0.01 into F minus 15 into P i minus 10. In both the formulas F is the percent of the soil sample passing the ASTM number 200 C that is 75 micron size. So, the group index which is uh, basically in the astro classification system is a function of grain size distribution and shape and the surface area of a uh, given soil particles. So, the chart which is not shown here, uh, but which has got primarily uh, different astro groups like A1A, A1B, A2, A24, A25 and uh, A26, A27, A3, A4, A5, A6 and A7, A75, A76. So, based on the grain size distribution and Atterberg limits, we have to use the elimination process from the left to right. and. Uh, we have to arrive at a suitable group uh, for a given soil. So, for that once we should uh, for this uh, the requirement is that we should have a grain size distribution of a given soil like percentage clay, percentage silt and percentage sand. Once we have that uh, based on the Atterberg limits and this grain size distribution curve uh, by using a eliminating process we keep on working from the in from the chart by using the chart from left to right hand side and arrive at a uh, certain group. And uh, based on uh, these properties, uh, the properties in the sense both grain size distribution and uh, liquid limits, uh, liquid limit and plastic limit arrive at the group index. And once this group index is known uh, with this uh, group say for example, if so happened that A76 is the group and the group index value is say 40. So, the classification worked out to be A76 within the parenthesis 40. So, that is the classification of the given soil and which, uh, which is used for uh, classifying the soil based on astro soil classification system. So, the group index which is uh, a, a means of rating the value of soil as a subgrade material within its own group. So, group index we said that is a function of grain distribution curve and uh, surface area and the shape of the soil particles and which is also a mean of uh, rating the value of a soil uh, as a subgrade material within its own group. Higher the value of the group index, uh, poorer is the quality of the material. For example, the group which is uh, A75 and A76 they indicate the clay subgrades and A8 which is the peat subgrade in the group. So, higher the value of the group index, the poorer is the quality of the material. So, that uh, also indicates 
about the, if you are indicating a particular uh, cl group classification with a higher uh, GI value that is group index value that indicates poorer is the, is the quality of this upgrade. So, useful hints for uh, using the by using uh, astro classification to classify the soil is always begin on the left hand side with A1, A group and check each of the criteria. Uh, you have got all the grains distribution of a given soil in your hand and algebraic limits of a given soil. So, by using these two, uh, use the elimination process, always begin on the left hand side of a chart and with A1, A group and check each of the criteria. If a particular criteria is not eliminated, then next criteria has to be taken and repeat the process. If any criteria is not met, uh, step to the right and repeat the process. That is what it has been discussed here and do not begin at the middle of the chart. So, if you one uh, feature is that you should not begin in the middle of the chart to classify uh, the soil by using the astro classification system. So, always begin on the left hand side with A1, A group and check each of the criteria. Let us look uh, soil classification system based on the uh, astro classification system. Uh, let us assume that uh, the given soil has got percentage passing number 10 sieve is 100 percent, percentage passing number 40 sieve is 80 percent, number 10 A stream number 10 sieve, A stream number 40 and percentage passing 200 that is uh, 75 micron sieve is 58, liquid limit is 30 and plasticity index is 10. So, group classification uh, has been obtained from the chart. So, you can uh, obtain this classification by using the chart as say A4. Uh, from the given data, F is equal to 58 that is percentage passing 200 CV is 58. So, group index is equal to 3.45 which is uh, used as a round figure of 3 whole number 3. So, hence the group classification is A4 which is obtained from the chart and 3 is the GA value. So, if this group is there is a fair to poor subgrade rating, it is called fair to poor subgrade rating. So, the group classification A4 is obtained by using all these uh, features and from the given data uh, the percentage passing number 200 CV is 58. So, GI is equal to 3.45 which is 3. So, the group classification is A4 3. So, uh, let us look into other example that is 3 where uh, the given uh, percentage of the passing uh, number 200 C is 95 percent mostly fine grained soil, liquid limit is 60 and uh, plasticity index is 40. So, the group classification from the using the chart, the chart which is not shown here, but uh, classification is A76. So, this is actually obtained by using the elimination process from left hand side to right hand side by fulfilling all these criteria and from the given data percentage passing 200 C is 95. So, group index value is 42 very high value. So, uh, this predominantly a fine grained soil you can see here percentage passing 200 C V is 95 percent. So, hence the group classification works out to be A7542. So, this indicates a poor subgrade rating. So, uh, one of the uh, astro limitation we have seen that uh, you know the groups are like A1, A, A2, A3, A75, A78 like that and A8 which are uh, you know uh, slightly deviating from the criteria like you know um, easy to remember and by seeing the group we will not be able to identify the particular type of the soil and all that is one criteria. So, the criteria for the groupings are logical, but shortcomings include requirement uh, for a laboratory testing that is of course, it is required and in order to determine the classification and the difficulty in using the code designation remembering the requirements for each of the designations that is one of the, uh, the limitation of the astro classification system. Uh, the criteria for the groupings are logical, but shortcomings include requirement or uh, laboratory testing in order to uh, determine a classification uh, and the difficulty uh, in using code uh, designation and remembering the requirement for each of the designations. So, in this class uh, what we try to understand is that we have tried to understand the engineering use of the Atterberg limits. And we also defined the activity value and we also said that the activity value is an important parameter to indicate the swelling potential of the clays. Then we introduced the classification soil systems and uh, different soil classification system which are based on texture as well as hydroberg limits. And we tried to introduce and discussed about astro classification system 
and the next class we will be seeing the in detail about the unified classification system.